Hello everyone. This video on bullet immunization shows how to protect the value of a bond portfolio by matching the duration of that portfolio with the desired investment horizon. But before we get to that, a quick review of the concept of duration, which is the weighted average time for the full uh, recovery of all cash flows from a bond, and that includes the principal that that will be received upon maturity. Other features are summarized right here, but importantly, you're going to find that the longer the duration of a bond, the greater is going to be the impact of interest rate changes on the value of that bond. And you do want to recall that interest rates and bond prices are inversely related. So as interest rates go up, bond values decline. And that tells you that if a bond therefore has a longer duration, it's going to be more adversely exposed to rises in interest rates. To calculate duration, uh, we simply multiply the present value of each cash flow to be received by the time uh, during which uh, that cash flow is received. Sum them up and then divide by the price of the instrument. Alternative definitions are presented here, uh, but they all are identical. Now though, as an example, say a bond has a phase value of a thousand with a coupon rate of 5.5 percent and current market interest rates which is a yield to maturity on the bond is 4.75 percent this bond has a maturity of three years so if you plug and play you're gonna find that the present value of this bond is 1020.52 and for simplicity we're assuming annual uh, coupon payments so armed with this information we can utilize the Macaulay duration formula and solve for duration to give us 2.85 years which tells us that it'll take about 2.85 years to receive all cash flows from this bond and that includes the principal which you can see here in the third and final year is included in the cash flow now duration is typically measured in years as I know it here and is shorter uh, than uh, bond maturity for coupon paying bonds and that's because some of the payments are received in the interim of the bonds uh, life for zero coupon bonds though duration is exactly equal to the maturity of the bond in bond portfolio management we can apply the concept of duration to measure the impact of interest rate risk by calculating the approximate percentage change in the price of the bond in response to changes in interest rates and we do this by utilizing what's called modified duration which you see here it's an extension of Macaulay duration which we just uh, learned about so as an example given the duration we just calculated of 2.85 years and yield to maturity that's given is 4.75% Suppose interest rates were to rise by 35 basis points, which is 0.35%. Now, applying this modified duration, we find that the bond price will approximately decrease by about 0.95%. So, in essence, with a duration of 2.85 years, right there, this bond's price is going to go down by about 0.95% if interest rates were to increase by 35 basis points. So that tells you that if the duration of this bond were greater, say 4, 4 multiplied by this quantity here is going to result in a larger percentage price change. And therefore, once again, the longer the duration, the greater is going to be the impact of a given interest rate change on the value of that bond. Duration matching will help us select how much duration is required to minimize the combined adverse effects of reinvestment rate risk and interest rate risk on the bond portfolio. The two approaches utilized are bullet immunization discussed in this presentation and bank immunization discussed in a separate uh, presentation. In bullet immunization, we're going to set the duration of the bond to the desired investment horizon as I mentioned earlier. So what it does is to protect the value of a bond portfolio or the bond itself 
um, designed to fund a single payment liability in the future regardless of the path that interest rates may take in the future so you're assured that what you plan to get to receive from the investment is exactly what you're going to get and the implication here is that any rise in interest rates although it'll reduce the market value of the bond portfolio but interest income on reinvested cash flows will rise by an offsetting amount leaving you immunized so as an example let's say a bond portfolio manager wishes to invest ninety three thousand six hundred dollars in bonds and desires to earn uh, to earn ten percent over a six-year period now if you calculate the compound value of this investment the future value is going to come out to be a hundred and sixty five thousand eight hundred and eighteen approximately and this is what this guy needs to uh, take care of a certain payment obligation six years from now the manager can meet this goal by investing in a bond or a bond portfolio with an average yield to maturity of this 10 percent and duration of six years in other words the bond portfolio manager is uh, by doing this is going to be matching uh, the chosen investment horizon of six years with the bonds duration which is also six years so let's kind of summarize this whole thing right here so this is the amount of investment right now ninety three thousand six hundred the face value of a certain bond is a hundred thousand dollars now as it turns out this portfolio manager is able to identify a bond with a coupon rate of eight point eight percent selling for ninety three thousand six hundred which is the amount of investments he or she wishes to make and the face value of a hundred thousand and the yield to maturity right now is ten percent as it turns out this bond will mature eight years from now but not to worry because the calculated duration of this bond is six years which coincides with the desired horizon of uh, the portfolio manager and let's show how that is worked out on Excel so these are the inputs right here this is the amount of investments the price of this instrument today if we use Excel function for duration we're gonna get we're gonna find that to be six years if I hit F2 right here you're gonna see the input settlement is gonna be the issue date of the bond and maturity in cell B8 is gonna be the uh, maturity date of the bond in cell B5 we have the coupon uh, rate be careful it's coupon interest rate in this case 8.8 percent and the yield here is going to be the uh, yield to maturity on the bond which is 10 percent and frequency is going to be one because we're assuming for simplicity one payment per year so now with that let's see how this shakes out so again this is the input and let's assume that interest rates will remain the same at 10 percent over the next six years that means the first coupon payment received 8800 bucks 8 percent of a hundred thousand that is can be reinvested at 10 percent each year can be reinvested at 10 percent each year so that six years from now the future value of this 8800 over the next uh, five years will come out to be 14,172 likewise the second 8800 can be reinvested at 10 percent each year over the uh, next uh, four years to give us this future value the third one this is the future value the fourth that's the future value the fifth that's the future value and finally we're gonna get this last payment of 8800 so if you sum these uh, future values of the coupon payments it's gonna come out to be 67 897 now remember this is an eight-year bond original maturity so in the sixth year when you're ready to pull out this bond is still gonna have two more years to go so what that means is the value of this bond two years from now at the rate of 10 percent market interest rate and future value of a hundred thousand dollars with uh, 8800 bucks paying every year would be the present value of it at the time is gonna be 97 917 if you add up these two check this out you're gonna get an amount pretty much in the same neighborhood as what you would like to have six years from now let's examine two other simple scenarios so let's say coming down here 
that we expect interest rates to uh, in, to go up by 100 basis points in the third year from 10 to 11 percent. Well, that means that here uh, the uh, first 88 would be reinvested at 10 percent to get this in the second year and then at 11 percent to get this in the third year. So if I hit F2, you're going to see the calculation there, which is this amount compounded at 11 percent. So you do the same for the rest of the period to get this future value. And that's how this is going to be uh, is going to be for the rest of the payments. This will be invested at 11 percent to get this and staying at that 11 percent to get this. So the bid goes on and when you add up all these future values of the coupons this is what you're gonna get six years from now. And since yield to maturity would be at 11 percent six years from now if you use that to find the value of this bond you're gonna get this. So as you can see if you add up these two together you're gonna get 165,732 which again is in the neighborhood of the amounts that you seek. Now observe as interest rates go up from 10 to 11 percent observe the value of this bond six years from now is below is less than what would have been the case if interest rates had stayed the same at 10 percent. If I scroll back up here you see it was 97 so there is a loss in value right here. However by reinvesting coupons at the higher interest rates of a uh, interest rate of 11 percent the total future value of your coupon payments is greater than would have than was the case when it was all 10 percent if I scroll back up here again this is 69 and a half thousand see up here it's only 67 897 so what you lose in value you gain in reinvested interest incomes <coughs> at the higher interest rates so if you add up these two you know that's how you get an amount that kind of keeps you immunized. The same goes over here where it goes down to 9% and you're gonna find that what you lose in interest income you're gonna make up in value. When the two are summed together you're gonna find that again you are pretty much immunized. And so as you can see regardless of the direction of interest rates the total accumulated portfolio value at the end of the holding period of six years is approximately equal to the desired future amount of 165,818. And why does this happen again? Because the bond's duration in this case six years is matched with the desired holding period of six years. Hope you enjoyed it and let's keep learning.